So would you please welcome Jennifer Evas as she comes and ministers to us this morning. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hey, um, can we go ahead and I, I know that you guys are prophesied out to the max. And then, you know, when you, when you have a, a prophet in the home, like they always have the word of the Lord. And so I thought, well, I would rather pray a blessing over you that I feel inspired <laughs> because I was just, I was just thinking through, I'm like, they, they know all the words anyway. So, <laughs> but can we just, um, can you stand and can we all just stretch hands towards them and, and, and pray? we just come in agreement that for your pastors and so so lord jesus we just come before you on behalf of uh pastor peter and 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 trisha and lord i just speak over them a uh, victory to every aspect of their life lord everything that that seems still to be undone i thank you lord that you are you are wrapping those things up you are you are putting those things in order you are tying up loose ends and lord i i just uh pray and bless them with deuteronomy 111 it says that they will be a thousand times more than they are today lord and i thank you lord that you are their strength that you are their strength, their strength, God. And Lord, that you are crushing their enemies. You're crushing the heads of their enemies, Lord. You're doing away with all that hate them, God. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for extreme favor on their life. That, Lord, you wrap extreme favor on them like a, like a coat, like a garment, God. They wear extreme favor favor and you are increasing their power you are increasing their fame the lord is the one who makes you famous he makes your name great and he's telling me i'm making their names great i'm attaching fame to their name and lord we thank you for them perfect health perfect life flow perfect wealth everything they think about is blessed everything they engage is blessed everything succeeds and you delight in them we thank you jesus can we say amen amen, amen. Mm. and there's uh this while i'm up here doing this there's this a uh, woman here right you right here you yes you can you stand and i just heard god just you know, conversing with me in my heart with about you, and he and the question that just popped up was, "Do you know who you are?" And with that, um, I heard the word government. I heard government. Okay, do you know who you are? Government. And and then I was just sensing. It, it, let me take a pause. Is Siri talking again? I'm hearing Siri. Okay. Hello, Siri. You can you can be quiet now. So. <laughs> She talks when I talk. I don't know what's going on. And so she interrupts me all the time. And so, but he says, do you know who you are? And I heard the word government, okay? And I also uh, felt the positioning of the Lord where you will, you will um, uh, begin to speak into the things that afflicted you. You'll begin to speak into and begin to shift and create the solutions and the plans to, to stop what has afflicted you. And I, I you know, the, it, it's, it's the whole thing with the prayer of Hannah and the whole thing with the life of Hannah that he's setting you up so you will smile at your enemies. Amen. I have um, a few books here. I'm just going to very quickly, I'm not going to do the do what I normally do with them just for the sake of time. But I have a book on uh, prayer. Uh, it's called The Intercessor's Handbook. This is our journey of victory through prayer in Turlock. And somebody from the back, if you want to come up here, I saw you first. So you come up here and you can have the book. Michelle, I'll have you maybe uh, mediate there. And Okay. This one right here is about the gift of discerning of spirits. And this basically... Um, I. My, I was committed to languaging a gift that dealt with the intangibles of the spiritual realm, where uh, those things that you sense, feel, taste, you know, smell, and God's actually uh, communicating to you through your senses and giving you information, but you actually misunderstood it and thought you were nuts. 
And some of you even got diagnosed as bipolar and diagnosed as schizophrenic because, you know, you really thought that was your issue. And you, you weren't. You had a gift. You, would you, do you need this? We always give this to the craziest in the room, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But she's, she's on fire. Um, this is about... <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is about your relationship with the Holy Spirit. But here's two things that are going to happen to you. You're going to develop and cultivate a genuine relationship with the Spirit of God. That is so critical. As a result of that relationship, you're going to walk in signs and wonders. So, so um, I'll have Michelle um, reject many of you and then pick only one of you. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. Can we turn to um I was kind of debating which which way to go this morning. Um Yeah, let's look at Ezekiel 47. We'll just kind of start there and see where it goes, okay? Um where's my internet here? There we go. Ezekiel 47. And you probably know what I'm going to uh, hit here. <clears throat> Ezekiel 47. Let's see here. Um, and we want to, uh, let's start around uh, verse 3. This is, this is about the river. The river, it, 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 it's about you know, it's called Ezekiel's River, and and it's a vision, but a lot of times we would equate this river as a metaphor for the Holy Spirit, okay? So so when you think of this river, think of the, the Holy Spirit. We can learn some things about the Holy Spirit by reading about this river, this vision that Ezekiel had way back when, and, and so we'll, st you know, start in verse 3 here. Um, uh, you know, it says, and, and when the, the man, Ezekiel, basically there's this man, could be an angel, I, I'm probably an angel, uh, is, is leading Ezekiel uh, through this this river into this river and and when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand he measured 1,000 cubits so they're stepping out into the river you know a thousand a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters and the waters came out to my ankles everybody say ankles okay verse 4 and again okay this man that's that's you know leading Ezekiel again he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters and the water came up to my Knees. Everybody say knees. And again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The water came up to my waist. Everybody say waist. And again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river I could not cross. The water was too deep, water in which must, one must swim, a river that can't be crossed. And I was, I was you know, pondering this. And let's, let's look at a couple things here. Well, first of all, the river, the Holy Spirit, we see that Ezekiel had to have a guide. He had to have a guide. He had to have someone show him how to go deeper. Okay? He needed help. This is the prophet. You know, the prophet didn't even know how to, how to figure this out. He, he needed somebody to, 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 to work him through and work him into the deep places. And we, we can learn from that because, because in order to go deeper in the river of God, we need to be led in. You don't know how to swim those waters. You don't know how. And, and so, so I, I just rejoice, you know, whenever somebody has a first encounter with the Holy Spirit, you know, I, because I, we don't have comparative journeys here. It's like as long as we're on one, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, as long as we're on one. And so we could just leave comparison at the door. But, but the thing is, you know, there, you have to be led in because we simply don't know how to swim it. We don't know how to go there. And so we see that this is what's happening with Ezekiel. You know, he's having to go through the process of finding depth, the deep places in this river. He, he this prophet, is actually having to go through the process. This is, this is Ezekiel 47. You know, I mean, he's, he's seen all these visions and all these kind of things, and yet he's still having to be led 
into the deep places. And so, so, you know, he's navigating the ankle deep. He's doing fine. I remember it was, it was so funny. This is, I had two sets of neighbors saved. Actually, I had three, three neighbors saved, you know, right where we lived. And it started, it started with, this is, this is the Holy Ghost. It started with, I had this dream. You know how, you know how that goes. I had this dream that um, somebody in my neighborhood got arrested. <laughs> That's what I dream. And I, I, I dreamt this thing, and next thing I know, I see someone from a household in the neighborhood get arrested, and they're in the papers. They make the papers, right? And so I, I grab the paper, and I go to their door, because we didn't talk very much, and I go to their door, and I'm knocking on the door, and I show them the newspaper. I say, does anybody need some help here? <laughs> That's what I, exactly what I did. And so then we had the tears and the crying, and I used to go to church, and I need to get right with God. And so, so we, we, we took it all the way, right, you know? And so, so we, had, we had, you know, that, that set of neighbors saved. Then I had another set of neighbors saved. Then I had another set of neighbors saved. So we're all going to church together. We're all going to church together, you know. And um, uh, sometimes I like a little buffer, though, because they're next door. <laughs> they're next door. <laughs> You know, usually we have a little space, you know, <laughs> you know, we can know they're next door. Hi, I need help. Um, <laughs> so, so the, what was so beautiful is, you know, we're a very charismatic church, very alive, much like yourselves. And what was beautiful was to watch them have their first encounters with the Holy Spirit. You want to know what it looked like? Goosebumps. Goosebumps. I feel goosebumps on my arm. <gasps> it's the Holy Spirit. Goosebumps. <gasps> goosebumps. Serious. Goosebumps. <laughs> and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And then the rest of us are like, been there, done that. You know, it's like that. You can't do that. You can't do that. And it was just amazing watching them have that first encounter, and they knew God's presence by the bumps, the goosebumps on their arms. That's how they identify the presence of God, okay? And so, so anyway, um, it, it, so, so he, they're being, you know, Ezekiel's being led into deeper places, and that's the intention, that's the metaphor, that's the example, and he's being led deeper, and he's being led deeper, and he's led deeper. And then we see something here about this river, that it's a river you can't cross. In other words, you will never, ever get to the end of the encounter or the kinds of encounters that you could ever experience with the Spirit of God. There is never an end. There is never an end to the experiences or the creativity or the kinds of experiences or the types of experiences. There is never an end to it. You can't cross this river. You can't cross this river. At the same time, you can't swim it unless somebody helps you. Unless there is the Holy Spirit leading you into those deep places, you can't even get there. You can't navigate it. You can't swim it. You can't do it unless he leads you there. Here's my question to you. Are you stuck in the been there, done that? What if there is a next? What if there is a next? I have found that, that the Holy Spirit encounters us, and there's a reason why he encounters us. It's not, it's not just to be, you know, I don't know. It's not just for, for nothing. It's not without purpose. The Lord doesn't do things without purpose. He doesn't do things without a cause, without a reason, without a, without a destination. Okay, and he wants to encounter us with depths that we have not experienced before. He wants to break open here with what's next. There's always a forerunner. There's always a forerunner in the experiences of God. Because, you know, it, it's this thing where he's constantly saying, don't put me in a box. I can do things you don't know I can do. All right. And he's constantly challenging those borders and those, those barriers that we have inside of us. And we all do. 
We all do. This last year, I have worked through offense at the miracles that God has done through my life. To, and they're, they're not even for me. They're for other people. And I'm like, are you serious? I don't get it. This is weird. I am weird girl now. <laughs> I didn't even ask for this. And yet he's saying, he's shouting, he's screaming a message. I can do anything. And I heard that so clearly. There's a next. There's a next. He's just looking for people who allow him to take you there. To take you there. Who will be the forerunner? Who will forerun the next wave of miracles? The next wave of glory? Because we are going from glory to glory. That's Bible. We know that. That means it gets brighter and deeper and more extravagant and more more encounter and more miraculous it does all those things we are in this tremendous power shift until jesus returns we're in this tremendous i'm hearing noises jesus is that you <laughs> i'm i'm hearing chariots and siri <laughs> okay <laughs> so, <laughs> and so, and so, you know, and, and so with this whole thing about we are going from glory to glory, understanding that I've got to position myself in relationship with the Holy Spirit because he's requiring relationship out of us. We have been taught too often, too many times to put the cart before the horse, seeking the power of God without, without relationship and cultivating any level of friendship with the Spirit of God. That will only get you so far. And here's what I have learned about walking in the gift of miracles this year let me tell you what happens to you when you operate in the in the gift of working in miracles well first of all it's real power it's real power and it's like and, and and sometimes you know it comes on so strongly I don't know what to do with myself and I've also learned because you know if you if you read the book glory cares you'll see my whole journey just figuring out how to be in relationship with the Holy Spirit dealing with my fears of the Spirit of God dealing with um, you know the, the things inside of me that would grieve him because I had some things inside of me some attitudes inside of me that would grieve him and cause him to lift off of my life and then uh, you know work through that and seeing the miracles starting to emerge and I just didn't expect that miracle to happen I didn't think we'd do that those are for those those weird people okay and and seeing those things emerge in my life and feeling his power on dimensions that I can hardly tolerate and then let me tell you what happens we love it we love the miracles let me let me tell you because you know to, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants all of us to be carriers of his glory and demonstrators of his power. You know, and, and that's, that's totally biblical and it's totally what he would have for us. Okay, but a lot of times we don't always understand the process or we would like to avoid it and let somebody else do the job. And I'll explain to you why. Because when you feel power like that, this, I call it the back kick. The back kick of the gift of miracles, the back kick, okay? What is the back kick? Well, what happens is whatever's in me that is not of God comes to the surface. It shows itself. Whenever that power comes on me, I have, I have an encounter with myself right after. <laughs> okay? I used to watch the miracle guys on TV. You ever watch those, like, those uh, videos? You, you know when they used to have... Uh, um, what was it? Um, well, I watch, I'm, I just don't want to name names, so I'm trying to like think like 20 years back. But anyway, <laughs> but I would watch these guys on TV, these miracle guys. Okay, totally legit. The miracles are legit, huge ministries. And I'd watch them abuse their staff. 
I'd watch them abuse. I'd watch them yell at their staff. I'd watch them yell at people. And I would be thinking to myself, these guys are jerks. I'm like, total jerks. I don't, you know, and, I'm, and these awesome miracles are happening. And it's just amazing, you know. And then I'm watching them abuse their staff. And I'm like criticizing them. And I'm cutting them inside. I'm like, these jerks, you know. I'm like, God, don't you have anything better, you know. And so, you know, sorry, that's my attitude. Um, and so, so I'm thinking these, all these, all these thoughts, you know, these judgmental thoughts until the, that, that kind of power started floating on me and I started being the jerk. You say, well, what's going on? What's going on? What's in me came out. A lot of times we, we have called it the anointing. <laughs> it's not the anointing. You're just a jerk. <laughs> it's not the anointing at all. <laughs> And the thing is, I'm, I'm like putting myself right there. I'm like, I'm just going to be so honest with you. I would watch rage come out of me after I just saw like crazy miracles. I mean, you know, I remember, I, where was I? I was in um, Tampa, Tampa. And this, this, the miracles came on me so strong. And one of them was like supernatural instant deposits into your bank accounts. Okay, that's, that's like, a, like a crazy miracle. And I'll feel this thing. And so I called it out, you know, and, and took people through a little process. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm hearing people scream because their money's dropping in their accounts. And then at the end of the service, I'm like, who got a miracle, a supernatural instant deposit by, by God? And, you know, and this group, this herd starts coming towards me. You know, it's amazing. It's awesome. But I had to leave the room. Because I could not tolerate one person. <laughs> I had to leave the room. I needed like a 30-minute break so I didn't hurt anybody. <laughs> and yet I'm willing to work it through. <laughs> I'm like, God, I've got a problem. <laughs> I'm not going to back up from this thing because I'm seeing all my garbage come up. Yeah. I'm not going to call it the anointing. It is not the anointing. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to create some sort of doctrine or theology to, to secure my sin within myself, you know? Yeah. All right. Um, and, and so this whole thing, he, he, and the reason I'm being so honest about this is because I know that he wants us all to step into this. And it, it can be scary when you just walked in, a mirac in, in some kind of miracle and then you turned around and did something, oh my God, you know? You know, like, did I really blast them out like that? And, and you know, and, you, and, and, the, and those things start coming up and then you realize the need that I have to have some sort of inner healing, deliverance work, counseling work in my life. If I'm going to walk this road. Amen. And here's what I want to tell you. This is not for your neighbor. This is not for the young person or the old person or the, the person that just, you know, you see them a little more you know, uh, uh, you know, on, on Christian TV and, you know, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the more well-known people, it's for you. It's for you. And I don't know something about this. When I walk in the gift of, you know, working in miracles, when I walk in that specifically, there's a communion in that moment that I can't find anywhere else. And that's why I keep going back in it, because I want that communion with him, even though there's this back kick that happens to me, and I find myself frustrated and shaking my head. And, and you know, I, I, I just really, uh, the, the point, it's, it's like this, this, I don't know how to describe it. When you're in it, you can't describe how close you feel to God. And that's why I keep going for it. That's why I keep going for it. Because for me, I know you all are getting miracles, people getting miracles and that kind of stuff. But for me, I get close to God. So I feel like the Lord is really drawing us. And I feel like I just need to communicate to you the process of this stuff. 
and like very honestly say, hey, you start going towards the Holy Spirit like this. You start, you know, in in your business place, in your workplace. We need anointed business people who can do miracles. You know, I've always wondered what would happen if some Christian business person is like on the brink of bacon, bankruptcy, but by the power of the Lord, we can fill their account back up. You know, I've always wondered if we could walk in stuff like this or if a city is going bankrupt, if we can fix it by the power of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But it takes a people who really know how to walk in in relationship with the spirit of God and knows how to to move in those kind of miracles. Okay, but but the thing is, but then then there is a surrender that there's a, a, a surrender that takes place in our life that we never thought we would ever, ever have to go there to see these things happen. And it's a surrender I don't quite know how to articulate. We all we all believe we we've surrendered to the Lord until he says, let's go deeper. <laughs> you know, and then 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 the question comes up again. Lord, the Lordship question comes up one more time. I know you can go here this far, but can you go this far? Because my river, it's uncrossable. And we are going from glory to glory. And there's a point where we have to say, you know, we have to really honestly address, am I stuck or not? How are y'all doing? And so we have to address that question. If he begins to summon us, and I believe today he is to this church, that he is summoning you into your next pure and simple Holy Ghost, teach me how to walk this path with you. What does friendship with you look like in a deeper way? What's going on in my own heart? That stands in front of it. Because with the Holy Spirit, you can't fake it. With people, we fake it all the time. I can tell by the signs and wonders in your life who you've been with. You can't fake relationship with the Spirit of God. People do it all the time. But there's, there's, you cannot produce miracles outside of a relationship with the Holy Spirit. How are y'all doing? I'm just kind of like, I'm letting this thing flow. And I'm like, this is an amazing message, God. I wish I, you know, I'm like, you know, I want to sit right here. What are you saying? This is good. You know? <laughs> so, so anyway, um, the second thing is part of, Going from glory to glory, and I think you guys need to hear this. I haven't broken through all this yet. I have been getting an education this year, and and it has to do with if we're going to go from glory to glory, that's like light, you know, upon light, you know, the the, the light of God and all the dynamics of that. Um, but one of the things he's been educating me on is rulers of darkness. We, we talk a lot about powers and principalities. We don't talk about rulers of darkness. We just don't, okay? And, you know, and I've been getting an education on this this, this past year in, in a lot of, for a lot of different reasons. Um, but, of course, this is out of Ephesians 6. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, I know this is, this is something you guys need to hear. Um, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Okay? So, so we've, you know, we've talked about powers and principalities. I mean, we've got books on it. You know, and we've, we've dissected powers and principalities. You know, we've, you know, you know spirit, territorial spirit of this, territorial spirit of that, you know, all of that. We haven't really talked about rulers of darkness. Let me tell you why. Because they're master hiders. And they literally hide themselves. <clears throat> and um, they are the spirit agents behind every cover-up. They use tangible felt darkness to keep things hidden. It's like a has substance to it. It's like a, yeah. Um, they bind people into silence on many levels. They are behind all of the secret societies. 
you know, and they partner with them to keep things hidden. And we're going from glory to glory, and I th- our, our, our next cusp of glory is going to be an exposing glory, which we love this until we begin to address the darn heart. And this is why I'm pre-warning you that it, a good prayer to pray is create in me a clean heart. <laughs> Did you know that you can't even have a clean heart unless it's created in you? So you can go ahead and just, you know, quit the striving, quit trying to, trying to you know, present your best self, create in me a clean heart because I can't do this unless you do it. When, when your heart goes dark, you can't discern. You can't discern. You can't see. And so there's this, I feel this tension and this wrestling match between the, Lord, the, the will of the Lord, the word of the Lord, glory to glory, but we've got this thing going on with darkness. When you're not honest, darkness. When you don't present your whole self, darkness. This, this entity, these entities have been really at work <laughs> and it's like this this I don't know I, I better not be the first person talking about this <laughs> I mean, I'm scared <laughs> so so I'm always the one that brings it up first it seems like you know um I, I just can't be I just it's got to be come on Jesus let me hear it from some others uh, but this thing with darkness and learning how to live in the light and be messy and be okay with that. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you always tell us kindly what your plans are. You always share with us, hey, this is coming up. Get ready. Position yourself. Because you, you, you're bringing us into a place of glory that we never thought existed. And he's doing a work in the eyes of the heart. He's doing a work in you. He's doing a work in the churches so that we're healthier and we can, we can work through things without being judged. Even the most embarrassing things or the most painful things. And he's doing a work in, the, in these areas. Because he's going to go from glory to glory. He is going to go from glory to glory. His church on the earth is going to shine like it has never shown before. And when, it, when we say shine, yes, the church will be innovated. The church will be in the business realm and the government and all that kind of stuff, definitely. But the church also demonstrates the power of God. The church also demonstrates the miracles of God. Uh, deliverance will happen on many levels. There's just a whole new wave of miracles coming. The glory of God is coming and increasing. Um, uh, uh, there's a deliverance going to be taking place in, in, in places that have not been able to be, be tapped yet or touched yet. Like, it's almost like we know the will and word of God, but we just haven't been able to get to that one. That's so frustrating to me. You know, it's like, I know they need deliverance. Why is it that none of us can get this person delivered? We're not there yet. There's a, there's a key. There's something we need to see. We haven't been able to see it. And so he's doing this work. It's like, like the huge upgrade that he's preparing us for, but he's also saying we have to prepare our hearts. We have to prepare um, uh, uh, for exposure. We have to, what do we do when my, when, when my heart is exposed? You know, am I accepted? Uh, you know, it, it, do we have those processes? What, what is my solution to, to work on these areas that offend the Holy Spirit? And so, Lord, we just say yes. We say yes. 
We say yes to our next. We say yes to your next. Lord, we know that you are preparing us. 2020 is such a pivotal year. Lord, we, we submit ourselves to you. We submit our hearts to you. We submit uh, things going on inside of us to you. We submit those places that we have kept in darkness. We submit them to you. We submit things that we have kept out of the light because we didn't know what to do with it. We submit those things to you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are giving us uh, an education about an enemy that you're about ready to take out. We thank you, Lord, you're giving us uh, an education in your glory that you're teaching us, Lord. You're teaching us how to move in your glory and move into deeper places of your river. Lord, I pray that you give to us, pray this with me, give Give to us, give to me, okay, a clean heart that you would enable me to carry your glory. We thank you, Lord. We are going from glory to glory. Tell your neighbor you're going from glory to glory. Tell your other neighbor you're going from glory to glory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. We are going. <laughs> and so, and I'm just giving you little pieces of the word of the Lord that I have for 2020. Just, I'm not, I didn't officially say that, but I'm giving you bits and pieces. And so one of the things I want to land on, there's something I know I specifically need to pray for, and then we'll see where the Holy Spirit's going after that. But he wanted me to really counsel um, all of you and others who will eventually hear this about being a finisher. Really, about being a finisher. I'm talking to you about this wonderful upgrade, and I'm also giving to you the reality of the process, okay? And I want to I talk to you then, and with all of that, I want to talk to you about being a finisher. The Lord has appointed you as an individual a set number of days. Every day he has a plan and a purpose for. Every single day of your life that he planned, that he purposed, that he, he you know, set apart for you, that he wrote down in your book before you ever got here, Psalm 139, 16. He wrote a book on your life before you ever even existed, okay? Um, you know, and he invites us to align our life to that book. He invites us to align our life to that, that plan that he has for us. I know the plans I have for you. Uh, you know, plans, uh, he has a future and a hope for you, okay? So we are invited to live to the fullness every single day that he has planned. And so he is, he is explaining and expressing that we are to be finishers. We are to finish every single day of our life. Don't quit in the middle. Don't quit in the middle, you know, and you will enjoy in the Lord. This is why he's expressing all these concepts to us. You're going to, you get in his presence, your youth will be renewed. You get in his presence, you, you will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. All sorts of examples in the Bible of people who lived vibrant for the Lord until their very last breath. And so we want, to, we want to recognize that you can enjoy the last half. There is a promise from God for every situation that you are dealing with. If it's a health situation, if it's, if it's some other situation, anything that's stealing your life flow, okay, especially as you move into your latter years, okay? And that's where I'm seeing people who don't have a vision for the end. Guess what, guess what walks up? Uh, uh, next to them and start speaking suicide I am so done with preachers taking their lives in the middle I'm done with it and that's because they don't have a vision for the end where you have vision you don't perish 
You break that word down, vision in the Proverbs, it says what? Where there is no prophetic revelation. You know this, prophetic revelation, okay? The people perish. Well, we have a prophetic revelation. We are not going to perish. We're going to finish. I want to counsel you to deny that voice of death, uh, deny that voice of death any voice in your life. Deny its voice. Deny its speaking to you. Uh, don't quit in the middle. You're going to be a finisher. And I felt like I needed to address this this morning. I wrote this down when I first got here this weekend. I need to deal with death. Need to deal with it. I just didn't know when. I didn't know when. Because I know how this works. It, 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 it wants you to quit in the middle. give you an excuse, give you a reason, mesmerize you. I've, I've counseled people at, at, at the altar who were being mesmerized into beautiful death. It's a lie. It's an absolute lie. You are to finish your days. Are you sick? Get healed. There's a promise for you. Are you struggling? Get delivered. There's a promise for you. Don't quit in the middle. There's a breakthrough for you. And I want to very, very candidly just, just invite you and, and openly invite you that if you're dealing with death, if you're dealing with suicide, if you really like, like something's going on here, like it's scary, you know, like you're wrestling with this thing. I'm going to invite you to come to the front. Today is your day of deliverance. I don't know about you back home. We do things as a family. We just like, I, I have a problem. I just come and tell whoever. I don't care, you know. That's how we deal with it. I want to invite you to come, okay, and to deny death a voice. Basically, when you come up to this front, you're saying, I'm denying death a voice in my life. I'm denying it right now. I'm going to finish my days. You know, because the Lord wants to meet you and encounter you with his vision today. He wants to encounter you with a vision for long life, a vision to carry his glory. He wants to, you know, a death and darkness go right together. In the Bible, they're always wrapped together. And he wants to explode the voice of darkness and death off of your life today. He wants to do, I feel the anointing for deliverance right here right now and some of you I know you're scared you don't want to get up and admit it come on you don't want to admit it you need to admit it you're I'm gonna deny death a voice I'm denying this voice in my life I've had enough this thing bullies people into submission it doesn't play fair and it hits you in the dark it hits you at night This thing is going to come off of your life. There is nothing to be ashamed of. There's obviously something in your, your, in your, in your uh, DNA, in, in the life flow that God has for you that death would try to steal. You have to understand what this is about. There's always a battle for something that God has for you. Okay, because Satan is a thief. He's a destroyer. And I love that you are so courageous and admitting it. I love this, okay? Because this is the end of this thing. This is the end of this thing. You are valuable. You are loved. Jesus sent me here today specifically to talk to you. Don't quit in the middle. Finish, 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 finish. It's time to hope again. It's time to dream again. It's time to lay hold of those things again. Okay, you are, you do matter. You do matter. You do matter. You matter. You matter. I want you to stretch your hands out to the Lord. <clears throat> stretch your hands out to the Lord. First of all, if you don't know Jesus right here, right now I want you to give your life to Jesus or recommit because some of you you've you've even drawn back from the Lord because you've just been in such torment I want you to just just as an act of faith even if you're having trouble feeling it but you know this is what you got to do step over the chicken line and go ahead and give your life back to him Lord Jesus repeat me Lord Jesus I recommit my life I commit my life to you 
forgive me my sins. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Take over everything. I commit my, my days to you. Every day to you. I submit to you. And I choose to live. I will not die. And you are the length of my days. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for a tremendous deliverance on this line here. The Lord is setting you free in the name of Jesus. I command all of that to just come off of you. You are a beautiful, talented, creative woman. I see artistry on you. I see creativity on you. Um, I, I see the ability to make beautiful things. And so, Lord, I just release that. Lord, we need her, her beauty. We need the expression of beauty to come out and be seen and demonstrated, Lord. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that death is broken and life is released. Thank you, Lord. Death ceases. Death stops speaking to her. In Jesus' name, your neck belongs to Jesus. That belongs to him. You have a voice. You are going to speak. People are going to hear you speak. They're going to hear you express beautiful words. They're going to hear you articulate beautiful things. I see the voice of God just uh, expressing through you powerfully. And so I put a guard around your neck. This neck belongs to the Lord. And Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you are you are surrounding her with friends. Friends that will help her. Friends that will lift her. Friends that will do right to her. I thank you, Lord, that you have a plan and you have a purpose for her. I thank you, Jesus. She will live out every day of her life. Not one day will be lost. I thank you, Lord. I sanctify her and consecrate her to your plans, your purposes for her. I just thank you, Jesus, that you have called her out, that she is a firebrand, that she is a preacher, she is an articulator of the scriptures, she is a prophesier, she is a miracle worker, she is a business woman, and she is wealthy. I thank you, God, that when the day comes, you will bring her into her own household, her own I thank you, Lord, you have blessed her. More, 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 more. Can we get the prayer team to come up? Is there a prayer team? I, if, if there's a prayer team and, and you're, I guess I assume you're identifiable, can you begin to pray for people, prophesy over them? Because they need to see, they need to see the end. They need to see the end. Just go out amongst the people. Just go out amongst them. Just begin to pray for them. Make sure every person that's up here it receives prayer. Because they, they need a personal touch today. If you are out in the crowd, we are we are breaking death off of people that you sit in church with every week. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. I need you to participate. I need you to come into this thing. There is a deliverance. There is a deliverance from death here. I hate that thing. I just thank you, God, that she will live out her days. I thank you, Lord, that you are giving her a vibrant, vibrant life, God, a vibrant life. Lord, that depression comes off of her. The voice of death ceases to speak to her. We command death to leave you in Jesus' mighty name. You have been consecrated and set apart to live, to live, to live, to live. Kasha, you are a blessing. You are a blessing, and you will bless the rest. And I thank you, Lord, for her life. She matters. She counts. Every day matters. Thank you, Lord, for delivering this woman, delivering her from death, delivering her from, from voices that speak lies. Every argument is taken captive. She will live and not die.
Are you up for prayer? Okay. Lord, I just thank you for perfect peace. Perfect peace. That her mind, her mind. Okay, I'm going to tap the mind that she's going to be okay. I've done this before. If it'll blow out that stuff. Those of you that are not getting prayer, could you pray for the people that are up at the front right now? Because there's an acceleration when we agree, okay? One puts 1,000 to flight, two put 10,000 to flight. Just so you know, it's the fear of death that's being prayed over, right? All these people weren't considering taking their own lives. They're being tormented by death. There's fear trying to, trying to take over their lives. Remember, the devil is a terrorist. He wants people to live in fear. In Hebrews it says that some people walk their whole lives being tormented by the fear of death. But there's an anointing here to break that yoke off of their lives. So what you're praying is that, not that just God comes in from the outside to break off the yoke. You're praying that they will get stronger on the inside and the muscles that come up that grow on their strength will cause that yoke to be broken off. Speak over them. Point your hand at somebody and speak with the power that God has given you. You're a participant. You may be the one up here getting prayer someday, and you're going to want your brothers and sisters in Christ to join in with you. Lord, we join in. We join in in this flow right now that the fear of death is being broken off of your people. You defeated death. When you came out of the tomb, you defeated death. That lie, that tormenting lie is broken off of your people right now. Holy Spirit, it's the spirit of life. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. If you're afraid of dying, you can't go. You're, you're paralyzed. We break off that paralyzing fear in Jesus' name. You will not be tormented. <laughs> 